As Phil Khalil recently pointed out in his review of the technologies curriculum, the term digital technologies is not well known in the education systems of Canada, Finland, Singapore or the UK, not to mention the IT industry itself. A second and perhaps more important question to ask is have educational outcomes actually improved? If we turn to international performance tables such as PISA, or the, which you, I'm sure you're all familiar with, which is the, the OECD-wide study, uh, and TIMS, Trends in International Mathematics and Science, it's clear that we need to improve educational outcomes across both the ICT and broader STEM disciplines. To remain competitive in an increasingly connected world, we need to ensure that the curriculum equips students for the jobs of tomorrow. We need to consider where future employment demand will come from and the skills school leavers will need to compete in a world that has been transformed by the internet, where nearly every industry is now trade exposed. This increased competition presents both greater challenges and greater opportunities. Many new jobs will be created, many will be destroyed. The key for us as a nation and for each of us as individuals and especially as parents is to ensure that here in Australia we are in net terms creating new jobs, new businesses, new opportunities. If we do not, if we do not become more competitive, then we cannot remain the high wage economy we are with a generous social welfare safety net. The key to all of this, therefore, is that our education curriculum must equip students with the skills to take advantage of these opportunities. This means that we need to move beyond teaching students how to consume technology and instead focus on its creation. With the current rate of technology adoption in Australia, very few primary school aged children, even as young as five or six, have not learnt the basics of how to use their parents' tablet or smartphone. My daughter Daisy's one-year-old son, I can assure you, is, is getting very, very close. He may well be uh, playing with his mother's smartphone before he actually walks. Uh, so instead of teaching students how to be passive consumers of technology or how to use Microsoft Word or other proprietary software, our educators should be teaching students how to create, how to code. And as Barack Obama recently observed to young students in America, don't just download the latest app, help design it. Don't just play on your phone, program it. Now to this end, <clears throat> the first year of the Abbott government has been a significant one for Australia's education policy. Christopher Pine is working to make the curriculum, particularly in the primary years, uh, less crowded, more straightforward. Last week he released the government's review of the Australian curriculum, curriculum that is all about getting back to basics, a curriculum that is less cluttered, more balanced, with a greater emphasis on literacy and numeracy. Now, while the review has been met with broad support, specialists in the technology sector have raised very real concerns that ICT has been overlooked. The Australian Computer Society, for example, has warned that any delay to the teaching of coding would put students at a significant disadvantage from their peers in the UK while others have compared the importance of coding to that of literacy and numeracy. Now let me clarify a very important point. While I'm certainly not suggesting that the authors of the curriculum review, Dr Kevin Donnelly and Professor Ken Wiltshire, would agree with many of us that machine language and learning should be for primary students an essential enabling skill like literacy and numeracy Neither have those authors suggested that important IT skills such as coding could not be incorporated into other areas of the back to basics primary school curriculum. Teaching students how to code, to use computers to create rather than just consume from foundation through to year eight could be appropriately incorporated into the mathematics syllabus, for example. A leader in this area is the Australian Mathematics Trust in Canberra. And I commend you to the work they're doing in informatics, a mathematics discipline where students learn the basic algorithms, data structures, and computational techniques that underlie information and communication and demonstrate their learning through computer programming tasks. It's also important to distinguish the recommendations of Phil Khalil, the 
subject matter specialist engaged to review the technologies curriculum from the review's broader recommendations. Uh, and I'd, I'd commend you to uh, Mr Khalil's own uh, report, which is one of the appendices to the overall review. Khalil determined that key ICT skills taught as part of the digital technology syllabus, such as coding and computational thinking, should be taught from foundation to year 10. I agree with him, and I agree that machine languages and logic are and certainly will be in the future almost as important as basic literacy and numeracy. Regardless as to whether the ICT or digital technology syllabus, as it is currently known, remains as a standalone subject or is incorporated into another, another subject area such as maths, we need to ensure that we are equipping students with the skills to gain skilled employment in an increasingly globalised workforce. That we're improving the pathways for students to study IT from foundation through to secondary school and on to university. And I commend Westpac for their initi initiative with these scholarships, technology scholarships that Phil Coffey spoke about earlier this morning. We also need to ensure that there is an increase in the percentage of school-aged girls participating in ICT and women employed in the ICT sector. And that teachers are supported to undertake professional learning in key areas of IT competency. 